Here's Brody Brazil. You know, I think it's pretty clear that if I'm going to be somebody to cover Bay Area professional baseball, then I should definitely be making a video when the A's and Giants pull off a rare trade. Now, to be clear here, this is not two 40-man roster players from respective teams switching sides. That still has not happened in multiple decades since 1990 or so, which I'll explain later on in the video. But still, I understand the fascination of fans. It's the Bay Area's two teams for now, finding common ground and making a trade. I actually take it one step further, and I've included their photos here because I think they're part of this process. David Forrest, who runs the baseball side for the A's, and Farhan Zaidi, who's been in that role running baseball for the Giants for the last couple of years. They both broke into Major League Baseball with the Oakland A's in the early 2000s under Billy Bean, when he was the team's general manager. So they have a very good familiarity with each other. They probably think alike, and that's why a trade of any kind happening might seem even more rare because two minds thinking the same way, they may not pull off trades as opposed to two totally different individuals. So this is actually kind of a cool trade, not just because of the two teams involved, but for me and the way I view it, the two human beings involved with making it happen. Actually, though, let's begin with the A's signing Alex Wood. Whoa, that's actually not even part of the trade here, but I want to separate it because a lot of people see a couple giants coming to the A's and they think all of this was part of the trade. No, this part was not. This is the A's signing the lefty pitcher free agent Alex Wood. He's 33 years old. He's had 11 big league seasons, a career 374 ERA. Yes, he did spend his last three seasons in San Francisco. In that span, 367 innings pitched and a 441 ERA with the Giants. Now, his deal is reported like this a one year contract worth $8.5 million. It's all guaranteed. And let me say, the reason I did not initially make an Alex Wood signing video, this happened a couple days ago, is because I was still waiting on the terms and conditions of this deal. The A's have not signed anybody this winter to more than a one-year contract. Their uncertainty is tremendous past the 2024 season. They don't know where they're even going to be playing for 2025 and beyond. There's a lot of location uh, situations and financials to be involved here and that are maybe unknown at this point, at least publicly. So interesting, but not surprising that it's only a one-year contract, but $8.5 million from the A's standards, that's a pretty high amount. And we'll talk about how much now the A's have committed between Wood and Stripling in just a second. But there's also a $1 million possible incentive package as part of this contract for Alex Wood. So obviously some depth in the rotation. We'll talk more about that in a second. Alex Wood probably wanting to sign here for the opportunity to showcase himself, to get paid a decent amount, to definitely be in a team's rotation. This is probably kind of a show up and show out type situation for Alex Wood. We'll see what he gets out of it. Okay, now on to the actual trade. That was not the trade. This is the trade. The A's get Ross Stripling, a pitcher formerly of the Giants, for his contract, as well as $3.25 million in cash being sent over by the Giants. And I'll explain that in a second too. The Giants get in return minor league outfielder slash second baseman Jonah Cox, who I'll also detail momentarily. Also for the A's to make room on their 40-man roster, they've outrighted the lefty pitcher Francisco Perez to AAA Las Vegas, and they've inf uh, DFA'd infielder Jonah Bride, who had a couple different seasons to kind of latch on with Oakland, some sustained opportunities. It never really worked in the long term. I always thought Jonah Bride was a pure hitter, one heck of a hitter, but it just did not work out for Jonah Bride. He's been DFA'd by the Oakland A's. So that's the trade. Those are the two humans involved. Again, it's not two 40-man roster players for each other, so we're still not doing that. Here's the details on Ross Stripling. He's 34 years old, righty pitcher of eight seasons in Major League Baseball, has a 3.96 career ERA. He only played last season in San Francisco, only 22 games in appearances, 11 starts, did not win a game with the San Francisco Giants across 89 innings pitched. Had a 5.36 ERA in San Francisco, I will say this, among the things that are maybe not popping out on paper, this does. A 70 strikeout to 16 walk ratio. You got to love the discipline there and not a ton of free passes, a fair amount of strikeouts, 70 strikeouts in 89 innings pitched with the Giants last season. So 
The situation, though, contractually goes like this. And maybe this is the reason why the Giants decided to move on from Stripling specifically. He exercised his $12.5 million option, player option, for 2024. Now, the A's will be responsible for $9.25 million because, again, the Giants are kicking over Stripling and a little more than $3 million in cash considerations. That's all been reported. And so it kind of softens the blow for the A's of this signing. It also, for the Giants, basically takes a player off their roster that maybe they weren't going to commit to, they didn't want to, but Stripling exercised the player option side of his contract. So instead of costing the Giants $12.5 million, it costs them a little over $3 million, and they get something back, the minor leaguer Jonah Cox, in return. Okay, more on Jonah Cox. 22 years old, a second baseman and outfielder, so kind of a utility combo, more outfield in the, the more recent years. He was a sixth-round draft pick by the A's in 2023. He came out of Oral Roberts, where he had a 47-game hit streak in college. And I realize that's a couple years ago. That's a totally different level, but still pretty impressive that somebody had a 47-game hit streak at any level of competitive baseball. He ended up playing after being drafted last year, 28 games in low A Stockton for the Ports. He hit 264, and he was 14 for 16 on stolen base attempts. You know, I don't know how many games, I take it back, 28 games, but how many times he was on base. I'm just thinking that 16 times in a short span of 28 games is a lot of base stealing. And that's a lot of successful base stealing. So you're kind of getting the idea of what he's like as a player. Second baseman slash outfielder's got to be pretty athletic. He ranked last year 29th in the A's total prospect system. All right, so here's my takeaways from the A's. You get Wood and Stripling combined, now earning $21 million of a total team projected $56 million in salary. $21 million is 37% of the A's projected team salary for this upcoming season as of right now. So within a couple days, the A's spent 37% of their total team salary in just two players coming up. And I say projected because there's a lot of players right now that are still going through the arbitration process or they're obviously under team control. They will be part of the A's. We just don't know how much their salary is going to be for the upcoming season. But isn't that kind of interesting that two players account for $37 million and you just got them? Both of these players, Wood and Stripling, are intended starters. I think that's what the A's acquired them for. That's probably why they want to use them. It gives the A's now at least a known commodity in their top four starters of a five-man rotation. You've got Paul Blackburn. You've got J.P. Sears. Now you've got Wood and Stripling added to that mix. There's also Mason Miller, Trevor Gott, who the A's acquired this offseason, really one of the only other free agents they picked up, and Danny Jimenez, All three of those names are going to be more on the bullpen side of things and potential closers. And I've just got to say, Mason Miller was starting games last year. His velocity was tremendous. And although Jimenez and Trevor Gott might have more experience in the bullpen, I know the A's want to put Miller out there to get him comfortable and familiar with relief pitching. But I have a feeling that by the end of next season, if he's healthy, Mason Miller might be this team's closer. And as I said before, the A's and Giants... They still have not made a trade with two 40-man roster players since 1990. I won't say who they are. I know who they are because I looked this up for research on this video. But you can go out and look that up if you want to figure it out. Uh, It's kind of a cool trivia question, but it's been that long since two, you know, actual roster players switched sides and went across the bay. Again, it has happened like this, one roster player, one minor leaguer, or two minor leaguers, or draft picks, or whatever, but uh, it still hasn't happened in our modern history that the Giants and A's actually swap actual players. So a rare trade between the A's and Giants, but not to confuse you with the whole Alex Wood signing, because that happened too, that just wasn't a part of, of this trade. You made it here to the end of the video. You know I appreciate that. Thumbs up down below. That'll help me in this channel. And if for some reason you're just coming across the channel, you're new to me, you're just figuring all this out, welcome. I'm happy to have you here. But make sure you subscribe so I can definitely see you back here next time.